The lathe is the most common of all machine tools. It can be used for turning, thread cutting, drilling, boring, and a variety of other operations. Whatever the type of lathe, or however sophisticated it is, the design relies on two fundamentals. As can be seen with this center lathe, it must hold a workpiece that's to take the main rotating movement. In this case, there's also a tail stock to provide extra support. And of course, the tool must be able to move along the workpiece and across it. The center lathe is used mainly for single piece production and can produce flat, cylindrical and conical surfaces by a generating process. The shape of the surface produced when generating depends entirely on the relative motion between the tool and the workpiece, and not on the shape of the tool. This flat surface is being generated by moving the tool along the x-axis, across the bed. The cylindrical surface is produced by moving the tool in the z-axis along the workpiece, that is, perpendicular to the x-axis. A center lathe can only cut in either the x or z axis at any given time. To produce a conical surface, the cross slide has to be adjusted to the appropriate angle needed for the cut. In this case, 45 degrees midway between the two axes. A wide range of components can be made using combinations of these three basic operations. However, for a fairly complicated component, such as this shoulder bolt, machining time is high. The first job is to generate a cylindrical working surface along the z-axis. This is done using a 90-degree approach turning tool. Using a micrometer, the diameter of the bolt is checked by the operator. This allows any adjustment in the size of the cut to be carried out at an early stage. A final check ensures that the first diameter is correct. A further diameter is needed at the end of the bolt to take a screw thread. This is machined in the same way. The two undercuts are carried out using a forming process. Here, the shape of the cut is dependent on the shape of the cutting tool. In this case, a high-speed steel recess tool. The first undercut is next to the screw thread and the second by the hexagonal head. So far, the process has been relatively straightforward. Problems arise when it comes to generating the screw thread. This needs a single point roughing tool and demands a great deal of skill and time in going over and over the same cut. The screw thread is finished using a formed tool or chaser which removes any rough edges. The tail stock of the center lathe can be used to hold a drill when a small workpiece is being turned and it's not needed to support the job. One of the drawbacks of a center lathe is the limited number of tooling stations available. In order to part off, one of the tools must be changed. When making complex components, a lot of valuable time can be spent changing tools. So, although the center lathe is an extremely versatile machine tool, 
It isn't economic for making complicated parts on a repetitive basis. So it's invariably used in industry for relatively straightforward processes, such as the shaving of this aluminium billet. The capstan lathe is a development of the center lathe and is designed to manufacture turn parts rapidly using preset tooling. The general design of the capstan is similar to the center lathe, except that the tail stock is replaced by a turret. The turret can be fitted with a number of preset tools and then indexed to present different tools to the workpiece. The turret is carried on a separate slide, which, when moved back, indexes the turret to the next tool station. The movement of these tools is controlled by adjustable stops. In addition, the cross slide has five tool stations, a front four-way tool post, and a single rear tool post. The machining process on the capstan is quite straightforward. This is a shoulder bolt similar to that machined on the center lathe, an operation that took 57 minutes. The craftsman will work from a drawing produced by a technician engineer who will have worked out the best method for the cutting operation. The component begins life as a hexagonal steel bar. The first stage is to gauge enough of the bar to make the component. This is done using a stop, allowing 99 millimeters of the bar to be machined. The next operation is to create the two diameters needed. These are machined using two roller boxes which carefully control the appropriate diameters. The first will turn a 22 millimeter diameter along the bar. This will be followed by a second set to turn a 16 millimeter diameter 38 millimeters along the length of the bar. The fourth process shapes the two undercuts. This is done with a form tool set on the rear tool station. The thread which took such a long time to generate on the center lathe is machined using a forming tool known as a FET thread roller. The last tooling stations create the interior dimensions. Tooling post number five uses an 8.5 millimeter drill and then a tap adds the internal thread. The job will be finished with a parting off tool placed on the front tooling post. Using the capstan, the actual machining time for the shoulder bolt is relatively short. Once the tooling stations have been fitted with the appropriate tools, machining is ready to take place. As you can see, the first tooling station, along with the bar stop, also houses a center drill which will prepare the bar for a later stage. Both involve manual feed. The speed used for the first operation was 1,260 revs per minute. This is also used for both the tangential roller boxes. The rolling elements act as a guide to give an accurate diameter which will have been previously set, so there's no need for endless micrometer checks. For the use of the form tool, the speed has to be reduced to 440 revs a minute. This involves changing the capstan's geared motor, which has three ratios, each with four options, providing 12 possible speeds. The form tool is placed upside down so that rotation can continue in the same direction, and as with the center lathe, make both the undercuts. The forming of the thread is considerably faster than the generating technique used on the center lathe. The form tool or FET thread roller used to produce the thread runs at the higher speed of 2,520 revs per minute. As quite high stresses are involved, 
It needs plenty of coolant. To use the drill, the speed again has to be dropped to 1,260 revs, and the process uses a manual feed. To carry out the tapping operation, the speed is further reduced to 120 revs per minute. Great care must be taken when removing the tap in case you damage the thread. With the capstan, parting off is straightforward. The tool in this case is on the front station, as the rear tooling station is being used to house the form tool. The total machining time was around three minutes, compared with an hour using a center lathe. The capstan is, unfortunately, limited to relatively small jobs. For larger jobs, the turret lathe is normally used. The distinguishing characteristic of these lathes is the large turnstile mounted on the turret carriage or saddle for longitudinal movements. As with capstan lathes, the main turret is mounted where the tail stock would normally be found on a center lathe. However, here the turret is mounted directly onto the auxiliary slide. This creates a far more rigid construction, making the turret lathe more suitable for heavy work such as the machining of castings and forgings. This is a rough casting made of cast iron for a lathe chuck body. The turning of the inside diameter and the facing operation can be done simultaneously to cut down machining time. Tungsten carbide cutting tools are being used to deal with this highly abrasive casting. For larger, more specialized jobs, like this valve for the oil industry, a specially designed chuck can be used to make machining and handling of the component easier. The lathes you've seen so far all need highly skilled operators, and that has drawbacks. A lot of firms only produce a limited number of relatively simple components, and this doesn't make employing a full-time craftsman worthwhile. One example of such a firm is the manufacturer of forged components who normally wouldn't employ any highly skilled machinists. To ensure the quality of their product, they need to take samples from their billets to carry out tensile strength tests. One way of overcoming the problem of making these test pieces would be to use a forming tool like this. Although forming tools may be fine for small jobs, the high force exerted on the cutting tool makes them unsuitable for larger jobs. The answer is to use a tracing technique which copies the shape of a template rather like a pantograph. The template is first made from drawings and then fitted onto the tracing apparatus which is mounted onto an adapted capstan lathe. First of all, the section from the billet has to be turned to form a cylinder onto which the tracing pattern will be cut. This is a standard operation using the tool post on the cross slide and a tungsten carbide cutting tool. Now the tracer comes into operation. A stylus on the tracing head controls a cutting tool mounted on the cross slide and movement of the tracer is transmitted using a hydraulic mechanism. As the stylus follows the contour of the template, the cutting tool is moved in an identical path, producing a copy of the template. The obvious advantage is that a tracing machine can cut complex work pieces without the need for highly skilled operators. All these methods are ideal for producing small numbers of components, but for larger batches, you need automation. A form of automation which offers many possibilities and quite low programming times is known as plug board control. 
This is an automatic system which calls for medium-sized production runs of around 100 pieces in order to be profitable. The drawing of the component is first studied by a technician who will work out the appropriate machining process and enter it on a diagram of the plugboard control as a permanent record. The programming of the control panel or plugboard is quite straightforward. Each vertical line of plugs is a given stage and each horizontal line a given action. Each stage is built up line by line and once finished will control the sequence of machining on the lathe unattended. The plugs or micro switches control the various parts of the lathe with bursts of compressed air. A number of actuating dogs and limit switches also play a part. The programming unit determines what will happen while the actuating dogs determine when it will happen. Provided an automatic lathe is kept supplied with material, usually in the form of long bores, it will produce turned components without any need for human supervision. This is an important step forward in repetitive machine tool operations. People get tired and bored. They get absent-minded and make mistakes. Errors can creep in, which can lead to bad workmanship. A well-programmed automatic lathe can control the movement of a cutting tool with precision and unerring accuracy, and will continue to do so indefinitely. These lathes are used in a variety of industries, and the programs are easily changed to suit new batches of components. A machine tool is numerically controlled if certain parts or all of the machining program are performed automatically and the path information is numerically coded. The numerical values are fed to the machine by means of a punch tape, magnetic tape or a floppy disk. The first NC machine was developed in the 1950s for the fabrication of complex aero components. Most NC machines are metal cutting machine tools and the largest groups are NC lathes and so-called machining centers, where a multiplicity of operations can be carried out in one setup. A computer numerically controlled or CNC lathe contains one or more built-in features. Some manufacturers use mini computers and others microcomputers. In a CNC system, a control program can be stored in the computer memory and additions or modifications in the machining process can be made via the control panel. Another important advantage is that programs can be stored in the system's memory so that punch tape doesn't have to be used if a workpiece has already been programmed into the computer. As with all machine components, a part to be made on a CNC lathe starts life on the drawing board. The component to be made here is a drive shaft. The drawing is then taken to a production engineer who will work out a machining program. A distinction must be made between hardware, which is the physical control equipment, and software, which is the program media. Here, the software is a punched tape, although a cassette can also be used. The operator first checks the program. The mode of operation is simple and all stored commands can be corrected, optimized or cancelled at any time. For this component, the particular dimension should be 30 millimeters. But the data that's been fed in, as indicated by the flicking arrow, is 20 millimeters. However, the operator can alter this to the 30 millimeters required by simply overriding the memory and changing the instructions. The CNC lathe is equipped with a large number of tooling stations mounted on its turret, which will suit most machining operations. The control system selects the relevant tool for cutting action required by its program. 
The actual machining is more similar to a center lathe than a capstan. The major difference is that the numerical control allows machining in both X and Z axes at the same time, making elaborate contours and chamfers easy to machine with a high degree of accuracy. With the drive shaft, the first operation is to machine the appropriate diameter. This is carried out with a standard tungsten carbide facing and turning tool. During the whole process, the computer display gives comprehensive information on the machining as it happens. This process illustrates the beauty of the CNC machine because with the decrease in diameter, the surface speed would drop where the revs kept constant. But the computer can control the surface speed of the cutting tool precisely. This keeps it constant without the complex gearing in the capstan and turret machines, which always involve compromise. The rough profiling is next. This is done using a profile or copying tool, which makes several passes. Once again, the numerical control comes into its own as it cuts in both the X and Z axes simultaneously, a procedure practically impossible on any other machine, and making the machining of a taper look very easy. The threading operation is similar to that used with a center lathe. It's a generating process using a two millimeter pitch threading tool. Although the FET thread roller used on the capstan is quicker, this numerically controlled operation is considerably faster than the equivalent machining on the center lathe. This thread generating process can be seen more clearly on the second thread at the end of the shaft. The whole process will take less than three and a half minutes and can be repeated with faultless accuracy any number of times. Alternatively, a new program can be entered to produce any one of a number of complex designs. This makes these machines ideal for the machining of a variety of different jobs in varying batch sizes. Although the increased use of CNC equipment is changing the look of many machine shops, this equipment is expensive. And in many areas, the more traditional lathes still have an important role to play.